on the reactions at all the connection points. All right, I've got three pieces here. I've got the wheel at E, I've got the bar ECB here, and I've got the bar AEB. I have one applied moment at the edge of 120 newton meters and three distances. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define some axes so that I can use Cartesian form more easily, so this will be x and y as per normal. First step is to start with the free body diagram of the entire structure and to see if there's something I can use, usefully solve for, like external reactions. So I have the same Cartesian coordinate system. At A I have a pin, so I will have two forces. It's restrained in both the vertical and horizontal directions. But A as a pin does not restrain it from spinning. That's what the 120 newton meter load is doing. It's spinning it. So A is just going to spin with that except for the constraints of the rest of the system. So I have the three distances, 1 meter, 1.5 meters, and 0 0.2 meters. And the other constraint I have is at C. C is a wheel, so I will have one horizontal reaction there. Those three forces have to constrain this from moving under that 120 newton meter moment. Let's find out how that works. I only have three, so I can solve for them using the sum of the forces in x, the sum of the forces in y, and the sum of the moments. I'm going to get ax equals cx, because I've drawn them in opposite directions, and I only have one vertical force, so ay has to be equal to zero. If I take the sum of the moments at a, where I have those two unknowns, I get cx times 0 0.2 meters, that's the vertical offset of c, is equal to the 120 newton meter applied moment at a. Those three forces can all be solved for. Cx is 600 newtons. Ax is 600 newtons, obviously, because they're equal and opposite. And Ay is equal to zero. Now, I've already got three of the things I need to know, but I can't get the others without disassembling the structure. So if I want to disassemble the structure, I'm going to have three different free body diagrams, all with this same Cartesian system. If I start with the wheel, that's sort of the easiest one, I will have a connection point in the middle. That's a pin. That will give me two forces, dx and dy. At E, I know I'm going to have a contact point from EY. I don't know if I'm going to have EX or not, but I can look at it and sort of say it's not going to hurt me to assume that it's there, because in this case, if I take the sum of the moments at D, I'm going to get EX equals zero. And if I take the sum of the moments at E, I will get DX equals zero. So I already know those two, and this wheel will only tell me that DY plus EY equals zero. So I can't solve for that there. I have to keep going. If I take now the bar ECB and I look at that piece, at D I will have equal and opposite forces from what I had before. So if I've had dy going up, I now have dy coming down. dx is coming to the left. I already solved for dx. I know that that one has to be zero, but I don't know what dy is. If I'm looking at what's happening at C, again, I have Cx, but I already solved for it up here. So I know that Cx has to be equal to 600 newtons. And it's easier to keep track of these as you're going so that you don't have to have so many unknowns as you're working through these. At B, I now have another pin. There's another pin here. If I'm disassembling a pin, I'm going to get two forces. I will call them Bx and By. Now I have three more equations of equilibrium. The sum of the moments at B, the sum of the forces in Y, the sum of the forces in X. If I start with the sum of the moments, I can say dy times the distance of 1.5 meters has to be able to balance the 600 times 0 0.2 meters at C. That means that dy has to be in the other direction. dy is going to be negative 80 newtons. So where I've drawn dy is going down, it must be in fact going up. dy from the sum of the forces in y has to be equal to by. So by is minus 80 newtons also. And if I sum back from where I had over here, I can now say that ey is a positive 80 newtons. So now I've got pretty much all that I need. The last one I have to find is bx. It's the only one I don't know. So the sum of the forces in x tells me that 600 plus 0, because dx is 0, equals bx, or bx equals 600 newtons. So that's all I have. I do have this other, this other free body diagram that I could look at. I have ay here and ax, and I have equal and opposite ey and ex, and at the end I have equal and opposite by and bx. In this case, I know all of these. Ax was 600 newtons, so this one is 600 newtons. Ay was zero, this one is zero. Ex over here was equal to zero. Ey, which we found right here, is equal to 80 newtons. By, we found, was minus 80 newtons. And Bx was 600. This is very useful because at the end of the day, we can use the three equations of equilibrium that come from this free body diagram to check our work. 
So the sum of the forces in x gives you 600 equals 600, which is very useful when happy making. The sum of the forces in y tells you that 0 equals 80 minus 80. And the sum of the moments, if you take it at a, tells you that 80 times 1 plus 120 plus a minus 80 times 2 and a half equals 0, and that's also true. So we have some confidence in our answers, and we can go ahead and answer the question. Don't forget to do that. I'm going to answer the questions with things like this. The reactions at A on bar AEB, I have to say which t part I'm talking about, because unless I'm dealing with an external reaction, I need to know what, whether it's this equal and opposite one or this equal and opposite one. Which bar are you talking about? So on AEB, I have 0, 0.000 newtons vertically and 600 newtons to the right. The reactions at E on the wheel are again 0 vertically and 80 newtons. In this case, this one's going down. At D, I have 0 vertically and 80 newtons up. On bar ECB, I can do the reactions at C and B. This is 600 newtons to the left and 600 newtons to the right, 80 newtons down.